Okay, think about we'll have to do a part two of your whole professional career one one of these days. Oh, yeah. but Sorry, dude. Think, no, no, talking. this is perfect. But think about from um when you graduated at SC, right? What what would you say you've learned the most in your professional career and with the US Olympic team? Oh man, that's a loaded question. I know that that could that's the whole this is the the preview to part two but in, in yeah, like yeah. one or two things that you think you've grown or learned uh from then till where you are now you just competed you know in olympics in tokyo so some mm-hmm. of the things that you think really helps to set up the next phase in your career i think through my experiences in my professional career and national team career and collegiate career mm-hmm. I've gained a decent amount of Mm self-awareness in what my strengths are, what my weaknesses are, what allows me to be a better player, where I can tend to get lazy, where I, you know, necessarily don't need any more work Mm -hmm. or don't need any more attention to this particular thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm not even speaking technically, like, I don't need to be in the weight room any more than I already am. Cause I'm already pushing my crazy. Like, for example, mm-hmm. that may not be the case, but I think self-awareness in, in many different aspects of that term is something that's helped propel my career to where it is now. I think I analyze myself quite a bit. I try to get better every single year. And I think I have gotten better every single year in my career. Um, because of that, I think I'm not afraid to tell myself that I need to get better in this particular Mm -hmm. facet of my game and then not even volleyball wise, but just physically Mm -hmm. understanding, being self-aware of what my body needs, what my body definitely doesn't need. Yes. What, what things I need to stay on top of every day Mm -hmm. and what things that I need to stay on top of once a week. Mm -hmm. And that is so important for me. The best ability is availability at some point at some times. Right. Mm -hmm. Because if you're always injured, then that opportunity might not happen for you. Exactly. And so for me, it's, it's such a big deal for me to be ready and understand, even if I'm not hundred percent, I'm still available and I'm ready to play. Mm -hmm. And my 85%, is still good enough. And I'm going to, I'm going to find a way for that 85%. I may not be slamming aces, but I'm going to make you pass the ball way off the net Mm -hmm. and I'm going to be precise with my serve. or Mm -hmm. I may not be stuffing a hundred, a hundred balls because I'm flying out of the gym anymore, Mm -hmm. but I'm getting great touches where our team's going to get free balls and let me get my hands on it. And we're probably going to score a point. We're going to kill that ball. And so I think, gosh, if I could sum it up, it's the term self-awareness, but mm-hmm. in so many different aspects Asset. of the game. Yes. That's and a life. great, that's a great answer. Yeah. And in life too, a lot of this translates over into just, you know, life and how we kind of pursue things. And the follow-up question to that is if you had any message to pass on to, you know, younger athletes, doesn't matter if they're aspiring to be volleyball players, but just younger athletes in general, what are some of your words of wisdom with that? Mm, mm. yeah i think gosh that actually just popped into my head so i'm glad you asked (laughs) um i think for me a huge part of my almost philosophy of sport is know your why Mm -hmm. and really evaluate your why and by what i mean by that is why are you doing what you're doing is it because you genuinely love it and it's your passion Or is it because other people think that you should be doing it and you are kind of interested, but you're doing it more for others than yourself? Because at some point that's going to show up, it's going to, it's going to show up and you're going to be forced to make that decision. And I think having that self-evaluation and reflection into why you're doing it is, is essential in someone's career, but also just their path Mm -hmm. because the earlier you discover, earlier you discover that the easier it is to change course. 
the low or, or even, you know, even if you ignore it and you really know that your why is somewhere else for me, for example, for me, if I wanted to be a professional video gamer, I don't know, mm-hmm. but I did volleyball because I'm good at it. And people, what would people think of me if I left volleyball at this point to pursue my passion? Am I really doing myself any good? Am I really, first of all, myself, but also my peers? Am I, am I giving my teammates that are out there, hopefully giving it everything they have, trying to put food on the table for their family and doing this with everything they have? And I'm leaving a little bit off the table because I'm not really, really in on it. To me, you're doing a disservice to yourself. To me, you're doing a disservice to others around you that are actually doing it for with with everything they got. And it's something that I'm extremely passionate about because I want everybody to be super passionate about what they do and love what they do and be super happy and successful about what they do. If you love volleyball 99%, but you'd rather do something else, like – and, but I need you on my team, you know, for example, I don't know. One of my, my star outside hitter on this club team is like, look, man, I don't, I, I'm really good at volleyball. I'm one of the best in the world, but I'm just not into it. And I'm like, great, go and pursue your passion because you'd probably turn out to be a detriment at the end of the day to yourself, but also to the team because you're not completely in on it. And I, ho- I hope and pray that everybody I'm around genuinely loves to play volleyball for my, and from my example, you know, in my little mm-hmm. career. And that for me, my why is I love volleyball. I love to compete. I love competing. I, it's, it's fun for me. It's not like uh, I need to win. It's like I genuinely enjoy the challenge yes. and, and competing and the possibility of losing and the pressure. I love it. Yes. And then some of my why is turned into my family. Mm -hmm. And, Mm -hmm. you know, part of that is having them being set up for their future, having that, you know, a lot of that evaluation of where I'm going to play next year uh, or the following year, my next contract is involving them. Mm -hmm. And so I still get to pursue my dream, but my why is also, you know, how, how am I, setting my family up to have the best life that they can in the future, but also in the present where, you know, if I have a competent city where they can find an international school and Mm -hmm. be happy. Yes. And all of this, everybody rewind it, listen to it, because this is for any athlete or even if you're not in sports, just finding your why and your passion, that will go a long way, a lot further than you trying to, like you said, ignore it or, you know, do it for the wrong reasons. Right. And I know we can talk for hours and hours more. We just hit the tip of the iceberg, which is expected with someone as much experience in your story career that you had. So we'll, we'll have to catch up one day on a part two, but I mean, overall, all of these great experiences that you've had, I can tell that you've grown a lot from them. There's a lot of things that you have taken to make yourself better. You know, it definitely was not easy for you. There was its share of obstacles, ups and downs and struggles and sacrifices. But all of, with all of that, that's what creates, you know, your passion, fuels your passion and makes you great at what you do. And we can say all of the people, you know, in Hawaii, follow the Hawaii athletes and see all of the great things that you do, no matter what the outcome is, we know that you guys are giving it your all. So, you know, thanks so much for all of the hard work and representing the state well, but overall, any last words? I mean, I appreciate you had a full day of practice, work, everything, and you took the time to sit down and have a chat. So thank you for that. But any last words? Oh man, I just, thank you, Andrew. Thanks for the conversation. Honestly, it was, it's a pleasure for me to be able to talk about this stuff and like mm-hmm. chat with, you know, people that are interested, but also, you know, I think you understand a lot of this stuff. So for me, it's a pleasure to be able to express and also relate or express my experience, but also my thoughts and relate 
mm-hmm. to um, some of those journey moments and some of those experiences is, is a pleasure. So obviously, obviously I've been talking for 95% of this. So I apologize on that. No, it's, it's awesome. It's awesome to hear the story. And last thing, let's uh, share. I know you have a deal with Nike, right? So share your clothing line, share your Instagram, any handles that you would like to share and whatever you want to promote to. Oh yeah, man. Thank you. Um, gosh, my Instagram is M Christensen 11. And so is my Twitter and uh, my clothing line stuff is there. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I don't really need to, I don't think yeah. I need to promote or want to promote, promote myself that much. Like I'd love to promote what you got going on, man. This is awesome. No, thanks so much. And I'll put all of that in the show notes, but I don't want to keep you too much longer. I mean, I really appreciate it again. Thank you so much. No problem, man. It's my pleasure. Appreciate it. Well, I look forward to next time, Andrew. 